What is the big deal about time? What is so mysterious about it? Why does it seem to only go in one direction? Our lives are run on time. Our sleep cycle depends on segments of day and night. Our harvesting depends on cycles of time, traveling, distance, when to be somewhere, meet someone, etc. It all depends on time. It is such a ruling presence over us that it's hard to deny if it exists or not. Clearly it seems to, but does it really exist? We all know how time works. To us, simple human beings. We all know how clocks work, the ticking hand or digital number climbing higher, only to reset at 12 twice a day, or to one every 24th hour if you use military time. The clock representing the spin of the earth on its axis, and a year representing the orbit of the earth around the sun. Now, I want you to take this concept of cycles and keep it in the back of your mind in this video. We will be returning to it. Time is said to have a direction, the arrow of time. We only travel from the present to the future, unable to go back to the past. We can remember the past, but for most of us, the further we go from the past, the less we can remember with any true clarity. We remember bits and pieces, big or small events that give us meaning to our lives. Memories like this can be sparked by hearing certain songs or seeing certain images. A memory sitting dormant only to be sparked alive. While I don't want to go on to a tangent in this video about memory, I do want to ask a couple questions about it. Are we really sure what we remember really happened? Do you remember all the events? Every mundane event of yesterday? The day before? Each day last week? Or do you only remember certain things? Oh, I went grocery shopping on Friday. I know because I have the food I bought from that trip and a receipt. We remember and it's backed by proof. But do we really know that existed? Do we really know that happened? While this could seem like a tangent when talking about time, memory is a crucial aspect to time in my conception of what time is. Because, well, it's fundamental to what time is to us. Without memory, and I'm talking both about our own personal memories and the shared collective memory of our species, the thousands of words, paintings, movies, plays, poetry, buildings, monuments, and megaliths throughout our history. It seems vital for us, beings with a relatively short lifespan, to pass on these memories which inherently gives us a past, a shared past, a bigger past, one beyond our lives and the lives of our immediate family and friends. For without it, without this passing on of our histories, would we think of the past at all? Why do we not question what the past is? What inspires us to want to learn about the past, experience it, visit it? What is the past? It's something that is gone, but was also a foundation for where we stand. It is a relationship, a relative experience as an observer. Because we are conscious, and we can think of abstract concepts like a past and recall memories, and imagine that, that past and put our minds into someone else's shoes. Having seen pictures or have the past world described to us, we have the ability to mentally put ourselves there with our own imaginations. Something that no other being is capable of. At least beings that we know of. Of course, because we can imagine this, we want to experience it in the present like we experience all things. We want to feel and touch and smell, look around and interact with it. And we ask ourselves, could we do this? Can we go back to the past? Can we go back in what we call time? So we do a lot of thinking, we group together and come up with all sorts of equations. And we get told, it's impossible. And then we get told what time is. It is told to us to be a variation of things. That all have to fit into this theory of special relativity. All this thinking and imagining and figuring out. And we discover in our observations that time, how we once thought of it as a constant, was now relative i.e. based on the speed and mass of an object in relation to the speed and mass of another object. Time for something going faster will seem to pass normal for that object, but to the other objects, if they had a consciousness and could observe things, they'd be moving extremely fast. And for the object moving fast, time passes normal for it. 
But if it also had a consciousness and can observe it, the others would look like they're barely moving at all. I put this consciousness caveat in here because often scientists will just say object, but we know these have no conscious relativity. They're just things. They have no ability to relate to other objects until they are forced into a reaction to it. And there's no conscious relation. It just usually goes boom or catches something in its gravity, etc. The proton traveling at the speed of light does not look back on other things and see them moving slowly. It just is a proton moving as protons move. There is nothing inherently special about it or meaningful about it. It is only meaningful to us. This concept of course shows us one aspect of time travel. If you were to move at the speed of light and return home to Earth, you would have went into the future. Everyone you knew would be dead and you wouldn't recognize the world you left behind. So this proves that time exists, doesn't it? Does it? Time did not move faster or slower to anyone. In fact, it remained a constant for all parties relative to their experience. Only in the different states did the differences occur, but time itself did not move faster or slower. You might say, what about the atomic clock on the space station? It moves faster and proves that time moves faster at higher speeds. Again, I will say, does it? On the space station, they do not experience time differently. Time, if it is a thing, cannot move faster without it moving faster. If it's moving faster, it must move faster, period. All this proves is that when you move at a faster rate than other humans, your state and everything in the object that is moving faster is altered at a different rate. Time does not change. The present is still the present. If the present wasn't always the present, then you'd have a universe that exists in the future and in the past. But we don't. We have a universe that is in the present. The past, if we want to call it the past, is just the state the universe was in moments ago before it transformed in the current present universe. The planets 9 billion light years away are living in their present, which is our present. The present doesn't change. Only the relative experiences change. And if we were talking about relative experiences, we are really only talking about conscious experiences. And we again are only talking about consciousness. For without consciousness, this all has zero meaning. Which is why I keep arguing scientists need to include the emergent phenomena of consciousness in all of their equations. You cannot have a theory of everything without it. Let's take the concept of the present being present at all times and look at a close theoretical model of which has a similar thought premise but says all things exist, all time exists, always. This is called the block universe theory. The block universe theory is just as I laid it out. Think of the universe as one complete block. And we, as observers in this block, observe time as a slice. The slice being the present, much like a frame of film, one static moment that we move along the line, the arrow of time, to create an illusion of movement or a present time. This is called splicing. It's an interesting concept, however, I don't think it stands, because it takes free will out of the occasion. And I do not think that this can be, as consciousness is an argument against the removal of free will. We are, as far as we know, the only things that can create. And most importantly, create from abstraction. This singularity is a fundamental concept in the universe and void in many scientific formulae. This is the hill I will die on for the scientific community to incorporate into their models. But as for the block universe theory, having all things being in existence removes all meaning and possibility out of existence is a dire and nihilistic concept. It is by any definition hell, or a prison, much like my concept of the simulation argument. So let's disregard that theory and talk about other aspects of time that give us an illusion that it exists, and start to think more about what time is. Let's take a look at a planet 9 billion years away from us here on Earth. It is a common phrase by scientists and the media to say we are seeing this planet 9 billion years in the past. They say this because the light took 9 billion years to reach us from where we are both located. But space is expanding, so at one point we were closer to each other. So wouldn't we have seen the light reach us faster than 9 billion years at that time? Right, let's say for a thought experiment, both planets were created at the same time, way back 10 billion years ago, when we were 10 light years away from each other. So we saw each other as we were 10 years in the past, but we start expanding outwards. And we're told that nothing can move faster than light, so we can't move faster than a light year. 
So eventually we reach 9 billion light years from each other. It now takes what took 10 years for us to see, 9 billion years. But we would have seen each light year up until that 9 billion, and so on, if we were looking. We are still seeing them relative to where we were 10 light years away. So are we in the past too? We can't be moving through time at a different rate, for we cannot move faster than light. And though we might move at a slightly different speed, the two planets I mean, it's a negligible difference for this experiment. We are not seeing the planet how it was 9 billion years ago. We are just at a distance where their present takes 9 billion years to reach us. So we have to really stop and think about the universal present here, because we are led to believe we're seeing into the past, or that planet's past. But we aren't really. We are only seeing a shared past due to distance and distance only. That distance and the amount of space the light has to travel is one measurement of what we call time. But it's not time as in something outside of distance. Again, this touches on relativity, but again, this is just relativity between two objects if and only if there is conscious observer on one or both of those planets. The present moment still supersedes the distance traveled. The light is transmitting both of our present times, it just has to travel a longer way to get there. Let's think of it another way. In our own past, we used to have to communicate with letters. In the US, the Declaration of Independence was first written in a letter sailed over the Atlantic to be received by the King of England. What the King read was something written in the past. But we don't really think of this when the sort of thing happens. And at the same time, we know time has passed, that it takes a certain amount of time for the letter to reach the King. But the King doesn't say, this is time travel, or I'm reading a letter written in the past. The traveling also didn't speed up or slow down the message of, or information. The present was never altered. However, information traveling over distances has set rates. We define it, this in part by time, because time is a measurement. It is simply a measurement of distance and speed. The speed illusion, special relativity only proves my point here, that science argues that time is not a constant, and if time was a thing and not a constant, I would say it's improbable to state that this can be a dimension, if it's reliant on the observation of an entity to measure it. The photon in its life does not view things differently. If you take the observation away, things just are. This is just the differential being of different forces and matter in the universe. Some things travel slow, others fast. If there's no observation of time dilation, there's nothing to experience it. The theory of relativity or special relativity depends on an observer or a set of observers, and therefore does not represent truth, but a relationship based on limited observational traits. Speed is the movement of something between the distance between them. The idea of faster is a measurement of this difference. It is not time itself. Though, I approximate this to be the more true sense of time in the mathematical concept, which is the concept of space-time. And it's different from the concept of time overall. The measurement is true. The concept of time is incorrect. Time is not a thing. It is merely measurements of the movement between states and objects over distance and velocity. Whereas time as we often think of it in the abstract way is the relativity between transformation, entropy, and creation with the distance plus velocity as a separate but subconsciously distinct phenomena. It is a measurement tool, both in the speed and velocity of things, but also as a measurement of relationships of entities, memories, and their present conscious experiences. You cannot physically go back in time because the universe, the planet, the solar system, and galaxy has moved a vast distance from the place we remember to where we are now. Those things happened. They don't exist in a slice somewhere for you to somehow travel to. Unless, time is a dimension, but not like how it's been formulated till now. Physicists come up with a warped geometrical shapes representing a fourth dimension. They're unable to draw a fourth line on the XYZ model. And they can't think of it because it's really a curved line known as a circle. Let us do another thought experiment to illustrate this point. If we were able to instantaneously teleport to the 9 billion years apart planet, we would see their present, not 9 billion years ago present, their current present, which would be on the same present as ours. The fact that we can't do this as yet does not mean the present is not universal, and how we perceive time is only a relation to other objects and distance. But our perception does not mean it is as it is perceived. Now, there is only really one way I can acknowledge that time would exist as a dimension, and that's as a circle, 
or a layer of measurement encircling the 3D world. We see the circle or the cycle shown throughout our ancient past and it's symbolic for a reason. Look at the cycle of a plant's life. Even mammals share a similar cycle. Life and death, memories passed down from the ancestors and genes. A flower's bloom cycle, if the planet was conscious, would, would it gauge each bloom as a birth and think time is passing? Or is it just a cycle? Cycle would suggest that eventually you would be able to travel back to the past because it's a closed loop. It might just take you a really long time to reach the past again. Part of the problem with our species is that we find it difficult to conceptualize the super macro, especially with regards to time. Time, because it's a measurement, is limiting. We limit our experiences to set parameters of the lifespan and influence we have while alive. We can only measure what we see, or what our instruments can. If anything, time is a barrier we have yet to be able to see past, a sort of self-imposed prison. Time is only our perception and relativity to objects, energy, and distance. Time is not real. It is only a measurement of what we see happening as conscious observers in said universe. There's no past because we simply can't measure the past as we are in no relative relation to it outside of our consciousness and the substrata of that, which is memory. While DNA and atoms and the information in the universe can retain this information and pass it along, we are the only beings that can take this information and form a relation to it outside of the mere physical or energetic Newtonian reactions. We build giant structures, write books, paint pictures, study the stars, write philosophies and create and build spaceships, leave our planet, smash atoms together, all to gain knowledge. We create concepts and analysis, all of this to t attain knowledge. Knowledge that is often stifled by the very people running these experiments and observations. My final thought experiment goes like this. Let's say there's an overseer, you could call it God. A conscious being with the ability to see everything going on in the universe all at once. It would see our lives like a blink of an eye, and time would exist as one universal present from that being's perspective. And if you take out that perspective, the entire concept of what is happening becomes absurd, because this concept is dependent on a conscious observer, just as our concept of time does. Well, now it's time for you to tell me what you think. Is time real? Let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and share this video. It really helps a small channel like ours. Thank you so much for watching.